What's up everyone? I'm here today to answer a question that uh, I've seen pop up quite a few times in um, a lot of the car and McLaren owner group forums that I'm in recently. And that question is, should I buy a McLaren MP4-12C? And the answer is an emphatic yes, but it's not the car that you think you should buy. Um, for most people who are interested in one of these things, um, I suspect you followed a similar trajectory to mine where you've owned a couple Porsche 911s, um, you're used to a reasonable ownership experience and maintenance, um, and you're seeing these cars in the, you know, 100K range and you're thinking, that's a lot of bang for the buck. And it absolutely is. Um, but what you have to consider is that these cars were originally $280,000, $300,000 to start. Parts are expensive. Um, these cars were a first of their kind when they came out. You know, first car McLaren built since the F1. Um, it's unbelievably impressive how advanced it is. Um, but you have to understand there's going to be growing pains. And so, you know, a lot of people will look at these cars and they'll compare and they'll see some that are, you know, really, really low mileage, two, three thousand miles, same price as cars that are um, 15, 16, 20,000 miles. Um, and you have to understand what's happening here is there's actually two classes of cars uh, that have developed over time. There are those that have been maintained under warranty by a dealer throughout their entire life, and there are those that have um, gone out of warranty and ended up in um, kind of uh, secondhand uh, auto dealers. And those cars uh, can be very, very scary because a lot of the maintenance that should have been done, a lot of the issues that should have been addressed uh, were ultimately deferred or put off or not done at all. And you have cars that uh, to get back up to snuff uh, to kind of McLaren standards uh, could be tens of thousands of dollars worth of repairs. And so um, I did a lot of research before I bought this car and um, I'll tell you some of the issues that I ran into uh, in looking at these things and um, you know let's see I've seen a couple and um, one in particular had about $40,000 worth of repair work done uh, by McLaren San Francisco uh, just as part of kind of general maintenance and correction of issues uh, that were very common on these cars. One of them um, was headlights fogging up. So unbelievably common problem in these cars. Uh, if you're looking at them on the used market, uh, you may see uh, either fogging here or potentially even mold. Um, I think it happened in just about all of them. It had happened to my car. Uh, they were replaced um, and fixed I believe under warranty. In fact, I think they were were replaced once and then um, ultimately split open and, and cleaned up. That's why you can see here there's a, there's some writing and it's a little bit uh, faded because I believe it was scrubbed on the inside. Um, another very common problem with these cars is the uh, hydraulic actuators have a tendency to go out over time. Um, the HVAC controls, we take a look in here. These things, these screens, they were OLED screens and they have a tendency to ultimately um, basically fade to black and become unreadable. Uh, when that happens, that's a $2,000 repair. Um, Iris. Uh, this car has Iris 2. The original 2012 12Cs have Iris 1. Um, and the difference between Iris 1 and 2 in terms of usability is very significant. Probably the most important thing that I care about is uh, streaming Bluetooth audio, um, which is available on Iris 2, not Iris 1. You can tell the difference. Uh, it's subtle, but once you see it, you, you can't unsee it. Uh, Iris One has, I believe, two buttons with indentations up here, and there's no marking on them. So if you see that on a car, it's Iris One. If you see this setup, it's Iris Two. And to upgrade from Iris One to Iris Two, I've heard is something silly like eight or ten thousand um, dollars. 
So when I was looking to buy one of these things, um, I had two options, two, two very clear options that I was debating. One was a 3,000 mile car with every last upgrade you could imagine from the factory. It had a sticker of, I think, $330,000. It had a carbon fiber windshield trim, you know, carbon fiber mirror stocks, carbon fiber seat backs, um, tire guards. It was done up, but it only had 3,000 miles and it was not under warranty. And it was the type of car that, uh, you know, will probably cross an auction uh, block sometime for very, very good money down the road, but it could be fraught with issues. This car had all of those kinks, all of those typical issues that you'd run into on a 12C worked out before I bought it. I bought it with 20,000 miles on it, and I paid, for all intents and purposes, the same money as a 3,000 mile car. And having owned this car for two and a half years, if I were to do it again, I would do it again, the same way I did it. And that's even with all of the issues that I've had owning this car. So the other half of this equation that people ask is, well, should I buy the extended warranty? And the answer to that is also an emphatic yes. Um, so my car, in the first year of ownership, I did not use the warranty at all. And um, I think I paid $4,700 for it. And I was debating, you know, should I renew it a second year? And I ultimately convinced myself that I should and I would and I did. And thank God that I did because on the way to car week, I lost a valve spring in the engine. And that's a, a story for another time, but ultimately it was a $65,000 repair. And it was completely handled by McLaren San Francisco from the roadside assistance to replacing the motor, dealing with McLaren and getting everything back to me, not a penny out of pocket. Um, the warranty paid for itself 10 times over. Uh, the car is a blast to drive. Um, and so I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, if you're thinking about buying one of these things, um, absolutely 100% recommend it. But my advice, go to an authorized McLaren dealer uh, get one that's under warranty and keep it under warranty and enjoy.